Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Madhushan. Uh, I'm working with a company called Hattika, so we're trying to make it easier for the people with disabilities to commute within Singapore. We work together with some uh, government organizations to make it easier for them. So as part of my project, I happen to be uh, experiment on these accessibility features on the iOS you have. So I'm here to share my findings with you guys. And uh, So this talk, uh, I will go by two main topics. One is the what, it, what does it mean by accessibility for the iOS ecosystem? And next, uh, we I'm trying to look in at uh, how to make your apps accessible. So for that, I will take two existing GitHub uh, repos and which are not much accessible, and we will see how to make it more accessible to the especially for voiceover users. I think, I, I mean, accessibility is a wide subject, so I had to choose one area or one or two areas and uh, see how we can improve our apps in those two areas. So if, if you're not familiar with the accessibility, so you might be wondering what is, what, what does it mean by accessibility? Accessibility is about supporting all users regardless of their abilities, I mean, I mean, giving the all users the great features you put into your app. So regardless of their disabilities or whatever the, the disabilities they're having, right? So, and I should say from the very early iOS versions, Apple has been supporting these accessibility features pretty well. Uh, it's voiceover and some, uh, I mean, iPhones have some hearing aid support like this, so it's great to see the Apple doing great job in this area. So, so as developers, we should aware that these kind set of features uh, you have the users have in their devices. For example, this one is the the invert color mode in the iOS. So, I mean, if any user have some difficulty in differentiating colors. So they need higher contrast contrast ratio than the normal users. So they might enable these mods. So you should aware that I mean there are significant number of users that might enable these mods or either the the, the grayscale mode, right? So the message with grayscale mode and this uh, the one I showed earlier is that uh, the colors shouldn't be alone represent any state of their. I mean if, if you're using just color to represent something, so what if the user is colorblind, right? So for those users, they don't see any difference. So when you're designing your UI, I mean, remember that and make your designers aware of that, these set of features you have in your devices. For example, this is another one. This is the, the switch control is the first one. It's for uh, people with uh, physical and motor disabilities. I mean, someone like Stephen Hawking. Uh, I mean, all they have is this kind of the, the focus element that keep moving in the app. So one, once it gets to the element you want to activate, they just have a switch, the one switch. So that switch can be either eye blink or some head movement or some just tap. You can configure it in whatever way you want. So the second one is something I think at least uh, every app must support. So this is about dynamic font sizing. So I, I see a lot of apps is skip this one, uh, but in when, when I'm using transit, I see a lot of users, especially elderly people, look at their phones like this, right? So it, it's, I mean, they're having some tough time to uh, read the text and the elements of the app. So keep remember that the, the, there's such feature in the device. I mean, all most of the app, Apple own apps support this really well. So you can, for example, say go to settings and uh, change this with the font size and check how your app behaves for these these changes. For example, 
anyone here uh, have enabled the voiceover feature of your iPhone and test how it works? No one? The, the, I mean, the, there's a feature for voiceover for, for people with blindness. I mean, it is to read the, the elements to have. No one try. Apparently, no one. Right? So, earlier I mentioned that the, the, the configurations users can make to their devices to adjust the device to their, their requirement. But in, in your case, if, if you still want to have that, the, the animation reach and the great UI you, you create, but you can use this API to check whether the, the user is enabled this one of these settings. And I mean, you can adjust your UI based on the current configuration of the device. I mean, average, I would say, I mean, don't, I mean, this is kind of the designing level thing, but don't make apps, I mean, much fancier with the unnecessary animations. Make it simple, right? Have something for I mean, nice interaction, but don't make use of them. Uh, I mean, without any purpose. I think about these people when you're developing apps. Right? So I I'm going to take a few examples. So how well these apps support the uh, these accessibility features. Right? So this is the first one. So I hate to bring this one because they 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 have improved this app from the previous version a lot. But in terms of accessibility, let's see how well it works. Voiceover on. Deep FH. FH. V. FJ. Login. ATM and branch. Markets. Button. Insights. Button. Promotion. Button. Online account opening. DBS Marina Regatta. FH. 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 Apple Pay. Right, you, you get the point, right? I mean, they, they're not doing good job in terms of accessibility. I mean, uh, as a banking app, as a prominent banking app, so I would expect they should they shouldn't ignore the I mean the blind people, right? They they might have bank accounts. That in the I mean, this is one of the I mean, I think for sure they're using some cross-platform thing. That's why the buttons are figuring like FX, 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 right? So if you're using the native control, so you have these accessibility features for free, right? I mean, it just if you're using a button and you, your button have a name, the, this accessibility speak this name to you automatically. So why this one is not doing such good job is, I mean, they're, they're not using the native buttons. Especially the, for example, say they have some segmented control to, to pick a segment. But at least the way, when you're navigating, the, the segment should say which element is highlighted. But this one, not saying that. I mean, user doesn't know which one is highlighted, either promotion or banking, whatever. Right? And thing, uh, the second thing I noticed is once you bring this in the, the slider menu UI, so it's still speaking the elements in the behind. Right? That's a problem. So. Uh, yeah, I'm going to take another application and see how it how it works. So, so from can we use the Grab app? <laughs> okay, I'm kidding. So, I, I'm a, so uh, this is the notification center, and uh, the app is the workflow. This one won award at the last time WWDC for the best app using the accessibility features provided by the APIs. So I picked the notification system rather than app also doing really good job regardless of the accessibility. But here I will show you one thing that they are doing. Also, the this is the workflow app is that you can aggregate certain tasks into one. Uh, one action and you can execute it. For example, the first one, the share location, it will, what it will do is it will fetch my current location 
and get the URL from the Apple Maps to that location and send it to a pre-configured email. For example, say I'm a blind, if I'm a blind user, that is really helpful. I mean, if I want to share my current location to maybe my parents or my friends, so I mean, it's simple as pressing one button. So he will get an email with a proper link to my current location. I'll show you how it works. Wednesday, workflow, run share location, button. Running workflow. Workflow finished. Selected. Bus 966. Saint. Andrew J N R S T H. Bus stop number 60081 at JLN Toateo. Next bus 966 inches one minutes. Yeah. For for example, the first one, the the workflow app is just a one button click. So it gets your location and emails your URL to your location to frequent get email. The second one is the bus the SG next bus app, it also doing some good job. I mean, I mean, when you are supporting accessibility, it's not just about reading the element you have in the UI. It must, it must make sense to the, the user uh, with these disabilities. So, for example, this one is speak the, I mean, not, I mean, it doesn't just say it's a one or something. It say the one minute and the, the next bus in, in this, uh, in three minutes like that, All right? And so now uh, we can. I'm going to see so how you can make your apps accessible to these users. The I mean this for I mean uh, this falls under two categories. So one is the visual accommodations. So this is about uh, about using the I mean supporting your apps uh, in terms of the configuration that user can make. Right. For example, the the grayscale mode or the the inverted color mode. So you should aware of that, and you should design for those features in mind. So second one is the semantic accessibility. The what the semantic accessibility means is so using the existing APIs to make, for example, the voiceover. Right. So how to support the proper voiceover use case in your app. Right. Uh, yeah, the first step when making your apps accessible is design for accessibility. Without even thinking about the APIs or whatever it is, first you should design for accessibility, right? Uh, I will take one example here. Yeah, this one. This is two uh, very famous apps. So you may already know the both apps, right? Uh, so one is, I mean, here the. I, I can say one app is great in terms of the accessibility, and the second one is not that great. So, who said one is the great one? First one. Okay, so what I they say the second? Right. I'll show you what's the difference. So, assume if you are colorblind, this is what you see. So in the second one, you don't know which one is selected. But this is the first one is of course the Apple phone app. So the point here is don't make, I mean, the second one is using just the color only to represent the state. That's the problem. Right? The, the first one, I mean, they just, just, I mean, not only using the color, they, they fill the element with the color. So. The colorblind users know the, the reason is the one selected, and you, you can notice this. I mean, this is a great example of one of the examples of Apple's attention to details, right? And second one is the dynamic typing. As I mentioned earlier, you, you should accommodate the the font size changes. I mean, the font size changes should be present in your app, so we can, yeah, 
I can show you some demo uh, for this. So I'm using the this this app from VBuildSD. I think Sunny built as a as she she's learning iOS. Yeah, I think she this is her first very first iOS app. So uh, I'll show you how you can make it uh, more accessible with the APIs. Right. So for that, I'm I'm going to need uh, to connect my phone. So, yeah, this is this app just show uh, the the events happening in Singapore in next two days, and also it has uh, it, it showed some famous I mean the popular GitHub reports related to Singapore. So it's a very simple app. So that's why I choose to it's easy to explain using this app to how to make it uh, how to make dynamic typing works with this app. So. If I go and change the, so this is where you can see the accessibility features. And go accessibility. I select the larger text. I I increase the font size. You can see the Apple apps. They dynamically change the font size when I adjusting the font. So if I go to This app it, it doesn't change the font size, right? So, in, I mean, it doesn't support accessibility. So, I'm going to show you how to make it uh, support this uh, dynamic typing. Okay, so I mean, this is the uh, list view controller. So the controller controlling the the list view you are seeing. So here, the method for the self or related uh, self or at index bar. So here, uh, I mean, this is the two lines I made to the font adjustment work when I adjust in the font. I mean. Rather than using the static fonts, Apple has its own set of the font styles you can use, right? If you're using the this font styles, it will automatically change. But you should remember to add this. Uh, here in uh, in the VBD cloud, you should listen to this notification, right? This one. UI content size category with change notification. If, if you did, didn't listen to this, you have to wait until the next app launch to adjust the font. So if you listen to this notification and call the reload table once this notification is sent, so then you get the, I mean, automatic, it, it should automatically adjust the font size. All right. So, I run it. Oh, 
school in class and heard it. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> she doesn't know I picked this up. <laughs> yeah. So, as you can see, the sorry, this is the new UI. Sorry, the label size and the 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 date label size get adjusted to the 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 font size user is adjusting. I mean, this is great in iOS 8 because the house is now now the dynamic cell height thing. I mean, you don't need to manually calculate the the required font size. If you use auto layout properly, you will get this for free. You just need to use the font styles instead of the static fonts. So that's the point. So I'm going to. Yeah, uh, except from for this, I just added one more feature to this app, like this, this sliding thing. This share button don't have any actions, but what I'm trying to say, uh, show is, so I mean, how these features should support the accessibility. Like, I mean, when you enable the voiceover, the system takes control of the gestures, so you don't have con the manual control of the gestures. I mean, system has the, the OS has the control of everything, so you have to deal with the OS itself. So. If I enable accessibility, For some reason, the, the sound from the phone uh, doesn't get sent to the to the HDMI. Sorry. Can skip that part. So here, one more thing I have to say. So this is uh, the accessibility has some the something called accessibility crates. So crates and the values and it's 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 about uh, answering the question. The the system will ask you some questions. So you, you have to answer those questions. Then system will speak those questions properly to the system. So, if I go back to the, the presentation. So, uh, so, we are moving to the UI accessibility and the voiceover. UI accessibility is an informal protocol, yeah, which is in Swift, it's a the extension of the NS object, and if you're talking about the object, you see it's a category for the NS object, so every NS object has these capabilities of the UI accessibility. So, uh, so I mean, uh, there are basic five questions you need to answer. So, so I'll show you what are the, those five questions, and for as an example, I take one component, this is from the Apple's own settings app. Let's say how the system deal with this particular component in terms of the voiceover. Noise cancellation, left right stereo balance. 50% left, 50% right, adjustable. 
Swipe up or down with one finger to adjust the value. Right. You can see how uh, the system deals with this kind of control. So, so now I'm going to interrupt those five basic questions you have to answer in reference to the, this particular control. The first one is uh, device server purpose. So if you are, I mean, every element should be accessible, but, right? For example, the, so that you have some UI views. I mean, if you make every UI view accessible, it's a mess. So you should focus what elements should be accessible. And this is a binary question, yes, no question. So you should say true or false whether this element is accessible or not. Right? The second one is the, the name. So this is about the accessible label. So this is the one the system speaks when, I, when, it, uh, when the voiceover user interacts with the device. The third question is the traits. Traits is about the personality. I mean, how, for example, the, the element I showed you, the trait is, it's, the system says it's an adjustable element. There are few traits, for example, buttons, adjustable, labels, like that. So this one is the, the one I showed you is a adjustable element. And next is the value. So in the control I showed you, it says the 50% left, 50% right. So that's the value of that element. Yeah. The hint is how to interact with the element. In the previous example, it is uh, side up or down to adjust the value. So if you answer these five questions properly, you will get a, a good level of accessibility in your app. So, I mean, I mean, at least try to support these, answer these five questions in your app elements. <laughs> right? Okay. This is the uh, the last demo we have. It's a it's a chart control. So, uh, uh, it is. I mean, I'll show you the app. chart is not accessible. It also a library from GitHub. I think it's a famous charting library. Uh, how many stars in the GitHub? So this, the problem with this chart is it's 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 rendered in the UI web, right? It's I'll explain a little bit how it works. So it's a they have some class for the the bar view and it has uh, different render classes for it. Um, two axes and one render classes for the charts itself. So when the draw right element of your the controller is get called, the in weave get called. So it will rend, it will collect each renderers and uh, pass it to the graphic context to draw each thing. So this one, the by default, they're not supporting accessibility. For example, if I try to voiceover. Right? You can see the, 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 the highlight cursor doesn't get to pick uh, this chart. So, yeah, this is a project, and I will quickly go through it. This is the render classes for the bar, bar chart here. What I'm doing is, so, while it is rendering, I'm collecting the required information for the accessibility here, and I assign it to an array called this array. This array, it, it, it's an array containing structures for accessibility frames. So I collect those information while the graph gets rendering, and in the in the base class of the bar chart, I have a method for set 
data of accessibility. This has, uh, I mean, then here I'm collecting, uh, I'm iterating that array, and in the in the graph view you have you can assign something called accessibility element. It's an array. So once you set everything, I mean, you can collect element inside a view. It's as a children of the view. So you, you get those elements and set the value. And you answer those, basically you answer that five questions, the traits, value, label, those things, and then assign to this array called accessibility element. So make note that in this array, uh, before assigning the elements, I also attach the, the, the parent view, because if I didn't attach the parent view, it will just quickly jump through the, the bars of the chart instead of the total graph, right? Here I need to show you the in the simulator you can insp actually inspect the the level of accessibility you are having here in general accessibility right you have the this accessibility inspector. you can see the accessibility in the simulator. There's no voiceover support for the simulator. I mean, it will show you the, the answers for the, the, the five question I mentioned. So the label is, is June, right? The value is 30, 31.0. The frame is this, and uh, it will show you how the voiceover will interact this element when you run on actual device, right? So here, uh, the takeaway should be when you are making these kind of graphs accessible, don't only only make the frame for the element. The expand the frame until the top edge because 
let's say you have something called element for zero, so then the voice of users cannot, I mean, it's not large enough for those users to price and see what's behind. Yeah, anyway, I'll push this code to the GitHub. So any question, you can tweet at me or ask in the group. Yeah, so what's going to be the future for this accessibility? Right, so it's rumored that Siri API is on the way. I'm not sure. You can anyone go in WWDC this time? Yeah, okay. Few people. Yeah, if you happen to, as a, as a minority, if you happen to bump into an engineer from the accessibility team, just please ask this, how Siri will help to make apps accessible. I mean, instead of having Siri at one location, so if, if Siri can interact instead of the voiceover, it can do many more things, right? Uh, and second thing is a home person. You can see the, the Google also introduced something for Amazon Alexa, and we may see something like, hey Siri, do this, do this in your home. So if if the Siri API is coming out, it, it would be great for accessible people because then all you can support uh, your apps to interact with just voice. Right, so, okay, as the final slide, so the takeaway should be the user base is diverse and the users are aging, so, Keep remember, keep in mind that these users are exist. Then, that in, in number, they're not insignificant. There are a lot of users with disability. Support them and invest some time for them. I mean, so if, if you support accessibility, as I said, it will wide, it will widen the the user base. I mean, wide user base means more users will have access to your apps, and that means more users will use your apps. Right? And also the accessibility is something low effort, high reward thing. Right? You can say if you answer those five questions mainly, we'll get a lot of accessible features. Okay, any questions? Do you have like any statistics to share like how many of the iPhone users are blind or uh yeah. yeah, sorry I don't have it at the moment, but I can say in numbers I can remember, but I, I can share some links. But I recently surveyed that the how many users affected with color blindness. There are a lot. It's like four percent of the population or something like that. I mean, it's not just about the they don't see the black and white, but they have some users have defici deficiency in seeing the particular colors. For example, they cannot see blue color properly. So there are a lot. Around four percent of the entire population are affected with uh, some kind of color blindness, for example. Yeah. Any more questions? For the accessibility voiceover feature, yeah. can we use it for non-English? Like yeah, you can. So that means it will automatically speak it? Like uh, no, in, in your apps, you have to use the localization properly. Yeah, I mean, don't just put the static text but put it as the localized screen. So then it based on the language you you choose in the setting which will speak in the language. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's not a question, uh, I want to say my experience as slightly related to accessibility. Okay. Uh, as a developers we tend to use uh, labels and add gestures on top and tap gestures, something related to that. Yeah. So as a as a user, if you add a tap gesture to a label, then yeah. you are able to add a tap gesture that you can in your code. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't make any uh, difference as for a normal user. Uh, you can still tap on that and you can still show some you can some perform some action on that. But when it comes to an accessibility user, okay. uh, the system takes that as a uh, label instead of an action associated with it. Yeah. These kind of minor uh, changes 
when you enable the accessibility on your application, mm -hmm. you can detect this kind of design changes as well. So, uh, other I had one experience like I designed my UI as a label, mm -hmm. and then later I got a requirement change. Uh, I had to make it as a button. So, instead of changing the UI, I I created a task gesture added to that label. Okay. So, but later. Uh, this kind of accessibility, accessibility issue came in, and then we got to change that kind of thing again. Oh, yeah. So, something small things that we, as a developer, do sometimes. Yeah, 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 that's a good point. I mean, at, at least enable accessibility, so you will find how fancy your app is. You think your app is great, but if once you enable the voiceover, you can see how fancy your app is. Right? Just, I mean, just enable a voiceover and just take how these users will see your apps then thing. Yeah, I mean, please invest some time for these people. Okay, any more questions? Okay, we can close, I think. Uh, I'll put that code in the GitHub or something. Any question, you can tweet at me. Thank you very much.